Okay, let's finish the discussion about the techniques used in this paper. So hemagglutinin inhibition assay um, is sometimes referred to as the hemagglutinin assay, the hemagglutinin inhibition assay, and sometimes just HI. So as far as I know, it all means the same thing. So here's the basis of this assay. Red blood cells alone don't do anything. And so when you have them in this little well, a bunch of red blood cells, they'll eventually settle down to the bottom. And so you see this little dot of red blood cells at the bottom of the well, little container, and that symbolizes no reaction. Okay. When you add influenza virus, because influenza um, can bind the red blood cells, it's called hemagglutination. So agglutination means clumping up. And the heme talks about the red blood cells. So that's how hemagglutinin got its name. So it's based on the hemagglutinin spike on the outside of the virus. So virus plus red blood cells in your, in your well, you would see all this clumping. Um, oops. Ah, right? So you get this, this red diffuse um, reaction. The idea is if the animal that um, we're testing has made antibodies to the virus, the antibodies will bind the virus and prevent the virus from binding the red blood cells. And so you get no clumping. This looks like a no reaction, and it's called hemagglutination inhibition. So you're inhibiting the agglutination, the clumping. So you can put different viruses, right? So you could put H1N1 virus, you could put H3N2 virus. You could put different viruses into this mixture and see if the sera, the blood from the animal you're testing, made antibodies specific to that virus that could prevent hemagglutination. Okay. Again, this is going to be done in serial dilution. So um, the way they do a serial dilution for hemagglutination is it's um, two-fold dilutions. Okay, so 1 to 10, 1 to 20, 40, 80. So everything's two-fold. And this is called a geometric, metric, geometric titer. Okay. That's just what it's called when you do it in two-fold dilution. So you're going to see these numbers expressed as geometric mean uh, titer, which just means two-fold dilutions, the mean is the average, and the titer is the value, right? So here, um, in this example, this um, uh, person, let's say, could at a 1 to 1,280 dilution could still prevent hemagglutination. So they had a lot of antibodies that could bind to that specific virus and prevent it from clumping up the red blood cells. Here when they tried a different virus, they saw slightly lower dilution, so slightly less antibody response, um, but still pretty good. So they, that's why they say this circulating virus is like this other one, because the inhibition value, the dilution at which it could inhibit hemagglutination was similar, okay? As compared to the second virus, the sera from that patient um, could only inhibit hemagglutination at a one to 40 dilution. So this means that the antibodies are not working very well 
or we should say antibodies are not specific to virus 2. Okay, so that means that this virus is very, uh, is more dissimilar to these two. Okay, so if you're looking for a universal vaccine, you would want whatever you're using for the vaccine and whatever viruses you're challenging the organism with to have similar geometric mean titers, right? So similar dilution levels where they're inhibiting hemagglutination. Okay. So again, higher dilution, which will be expressed as 1280, not 1 to 1 to 1280. Um, uh, I just lost my train of thought. Sorry. Um, so anyways, the higher the number, the higher the bar um, means the more the antibodies could block hemagglutin, which means the antibodies were specific to that type of virus. And you're going to see hemagglutin in assays in figure three. All right, I hope that is clear. Um, Microneutralization assay. Um, this is only found in figure 5e. And to me, it's a little bit confusing. Um, so, what they do is they take the sera, the blood from the animals, and they do this RDE treatment. So, RDE stands for receptor uh, deactivating enzyme. I'm pretty sure. Hold on. I wrote this somewhere. I don't trust my memory anymore. Okay. Receptor, sorry, destroying enzyme. Okay. RDE. Which actually, I looked this up, is just a fancy name for neuraminidase. Okay, so remember on the spikes of the influenza, you've got the HA spike and you've got the NA spike. And remember that neuraminidase is important for releasing the virus after it has budded out of the cell. So here's your cell and there's the receptors, sialic acid, and the neuraminidase, ugh, I don't know why it does this when I'm in my office. The neuraminidase will bind to the receptor on the cell, and the, the virus would get stuck there. So this enzyme, ASE ending, actually cleaves the receptor so that the virus can escape and go infect another cell. So what they do is they treat the sera with neuraminidase and the idea is is to remove non-specific inhibitors all right so they want to remove things that will be binding to this virus um, or I'm sorry to the antibodies binding to the antibodies and pre preventing them from working. So they take this RDE treated sera, they add 200 plaque forming units of virus, so that's a quantity of virus, and they let it incubate. And so this is allowing HA specific antibodies to bind to the virus and prevent infection. Okay. And then they let this sit for an hour at room temperature and then they take this little mixture and they put it on a plate with cells on it. So now they're actually infecting cells with any remaining 
or I should say non-blocked virus. Okay. So they let the virus, um, if there's virus left that has not been blocked by the antibodies, right? Here's antibodies blocking virus. Whoops. Then those viruses can infect the cells and make new virus. So they harvest the virus that's produced after four days and they do a uh, hemagglutinin assay to see how much virus was produced. So they're looking, is there now virus clumping? Uh, is there a virus? Are there red blood cells clumping or not? So it's not a hemagglutinin inhibition assay, but it's the same kind of concept, it's just happening right here. So they're asking, is there virus still that will cause clumping? Okay. Um, I don't really understand why they're producing more virus and they don't just do a um, hemagglutinin inhibition assay. The key word I think here is neutralization and neutralization means you are blocking um, infection. So it's not just blocking the interaction with red blood cells, but is it actually blocking infection of this virus? So are they neutralizing antibodies? So we can talk more about that on Monday. Um, the last technique they do is a plaque assay which is, this is called virus titer data, right? And remember that titer means concentration. So remember a plaque assay is where you have a lawn of cells and you put the virus on there and, oh, this was, doesn't work well, but as the virus infects and spreads, it makes plaques, so it makes holes in the lawn of cells, and each plaque represents one virus. So this is just a way to quantify infectious number of infectious, infectious viruses. Okay, so you see it represented as PFU, most of the time per mil. They do also do, I think, grams per t of tissue. This is plaque forming units. 